Welcome to the Fly Fishing Insider Podcast. For each week, we speak with brands, icons, innovators, and trailblazers within the fly fishing industry, exploring both the successes and failures they've encountered along the way to become who they are today. But first, if you have not yet subscribed to the podcast or joined our email list, please do so by going to the Fly Fisher Insider Podcast.com, or you can also find us on Instagram at Fly Fisher Insider Podcast. Now let's begin. Welcome to the Fly Fishing Insider Podcast. Today, our guest is Daniel and Ali Ernest from Whiskey Leatherworks, based out of Montana. Here today to tell us more about Whiskey Leatherworks is Daniel and Ali. Hey, guys. Welcome to the show. Hey, Greg. How are you doing? How's it going? Good, good. How are you guys doing? Doing well. Just uh, slowly moving into uh, summer mode, uh, enjoying some nice weather and tail end of uh, runoff. So, yeah, it's a great time here in um, Missoula. Missoula, Montana, Montana, I take it. Oh, yes. Awesome. How's the fishing out there right now? Well, it's, it's starting to shape up really well. Uh, you know, some of the smaller waters are, are clearing up first. Uh, the Clark Fork is still kind of blown out right now, but everything's really shaping up and people are people are starting to get out. So. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So. Welcome, to, welcome to summer. Definitely. One of, the, one of the perks of living in a beautiful place, that's for sure. So, hey, guys, before... Uh, before we get into the actual whiskey leatherworks and what you do and how how much you guys are kicking ass in the industry and stuff like that, what I want to do is get a bit of your background in, in how you came about to getting to where you are now of starting this company, plus your, your fly fishing backgrounds as well. So, yeah, Daniel, yeah. go ahead. Uh, yeah. Yeah, for me, I, you know, I, I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia, and lived there until 2004. And 2004, we moved west to Missoula to give it a shot and tried it for one year. Then one year turned to two to four to six to eight. And here we are, uh, you know, 16 years later. And uh, it's been a, a really nice transition from the southeast. Um, we still get back home quite a bit and enjoy, you know, visits there. But love living here. And uh, I think we're going to be here for a while longer. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as, like, my fishing background uh, you know, grew up fishing, mostly spin fishing, bait fishing, uh, a lot of bass fishing, conventional tackle. And it was around about the same time I met Allie is when I started dabbling with, uh, that was like in 2000, started dabbling with a, uh, a fly rod in some of the little small uh, lakes and, you know, some of the smaller ponds around uh, the Atlanta area. And really uh, dove into it, you know, once I met Allie who was a, uh, an accomplished fly fisher herself and kind of a funny story. And on our first date, I went over to her house to uh, hang, hang up my coat, opened up the closet and there uh, hanging in the, hanging the closet was a pair of Orvis waders. And when I saw that, I was like, Oh my gosh, I, I found a, a nice one here. So um, yeah. So I, since around about two, th- about 2000 as when I kind of started playing with the fly rod and ever since then, it's just, wanted to get more and more involved in it and yeah i love everything about it yeah awesome definitely uh agree ali so you're an accomplished fly fisher like was the second date like hey daniel let's go we're going fly fishing if you can't cast this is kind of <laughs> kind of done now or what walk us through your your journey <laughs> of fly fishing so yeah so i'd like to to think i was an accomplished fly fisher person uh, I think motherhood has gotten a bit in the way of that, but it's certainly still in my blood. Um, I grew up in upstate New York. Uh, my grandfather was a fly fisherman, and I learned under his tutelage um, on his uh, bamboo rods. And uh, it, it was definitely fly fishing then after his passing became a way that I stayed in touch with the stories that he told me. So, um when I moved down to Atlanta and Danny found the waiters, I think like one of his next moves was maybe to like steal some of my gear. <laughs> Not <laughs> steal it, but like it quickly started disappearing. So yeah, that, um, it became a really quick and easy connection point. Um, it's not 
every day that you meet someone who has that same interest. And I think it spoke a lot about both of our natures, that kind of broader conversation of somebody's nature. So that was an interest of his and he was super passionate about it. And it was an easy place for us to come together and start a lot of different dialogues with fishing at the center of it. Yes, I mean, many of our first dates were, you know, up in the North Georgia, the Southern Appalachian uh, creeks and streams, doing some fly fishing up there. And uh, as well as, you know, surprisingly so, the the Chattahoochee River runs right through the middle of Atlanta and -hmm. and, uh, they stock it pretty heavily in the winter months. And it's actually a lot of, it provides a great opportunity for people like myself, you know, back in the 2000, 2001 timeframe to uh, go out and, you know, a completely urban river and catching, you know, tons and tons of fish. And you know, granted, they're all stockers, but um, yeah, that was part of our kind of a courting process with many days on the water fishing together. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. I, I mean, hey, I wish I had a fishing date when I was dating, so never, never materialized. <laughs> um, you know what, guys, I want to, here's what I want to go with this now. What I want to do is, so... Danny, you guys created this this amazing company, Whiskey Weatherworks, and you know, based out of Montana. There, did you move to Montana? Like, walk us through how that all transpired. Were you like, I'm hoping you got some. Like, I was working in a cubicle, and I just like threw my computer. Like, walk us through how you you got to where to the beginning. Well, of you're business. Yeah. well, you're close. Yeah, yeah okay, you're close. Perfect, it wasn't good. so much in a cubicle. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't so much in a cubicle as much as it was on the road and out in the field. Uh, so my yeah, professional background is in environmental consulting, uh, hydrogeology, so doing a lot of uh, environmental remediation work, but spending a lot of time on the road, mm-hmm. especially in in the West here. The, most of the jobs are out of town, and spending a lot of time away from my uh, away from my family, which got to be really it, it was stressful not only on me but also on Allie and taking care of our two girls. And uh, you know, I started Whiskey Leatherworks as as a hobby, more or less, you know, I've always loved creating things and working with my hands and seeing something and taking it and making it and improving it and making it better and making it more unique and uh, kind of a, a, a way, it was more of a creative outlet for myself. And it started literally started on my workbench in my garage and it was back in 2015, 14 or 15. <clears throat> and started out just making belts and you know as our as time progressed you know our products started expanding you know from belts into wallets and I kind of grew from there to the point where and it was taking up a lot of my time I was you know on the road quite a bit coming back home and trying to catch up on orders and trying to learn website design uh, I mean just learning all the aspects of this what started off as a hobby and trying to transition into a business. And eventually over time, up until I guess it was last year, last uh, October is when, you know, Allie approached me and she said, you know, it's either one or the other, you know, we need to either go all in or pull the plug on it because it's taking away a lot of our family time and my time with her and with the kids. And, Mm -hmm. At that point, she and I both decided to go completely all in, and that's when I stopped working as an environmental consultant and went full-time into Whiskey Leatherworks, and Allie did too. And since then, we've just had a tremendous amount of growth, and you know, a lot of that growth is the result of Allie's presence in the company and coming on as like co-owner and director of sales and marketing, and um, you know, that is her background. Uh, and that's what she brought to the company. And since then, it's just been uh, and literally an explosion of of growth. And we are here today because of, you know, her mm-hmm. expertise that she brought to the company. Yeah, absolutely. I I can see how that, you know, the husband wife team there, you know, you guys come together and you've really built it in over the past year. I mean, even I've been following you for the past year or so. And you know, the exponential growth, as you mentioned, is there. You know, I want to get back to the roots of it, though. The roots being like, Weather work is not a traditional hobby. You said it was started off as a hobby. Like, how did you, mm-hmm. why, like, how did you, why did you, like, what attracted you to, you know, 
sitting there going, I want to work with leather. I want to make belts. Like, was that always something you've done? Was it in your family? Like, how did that come? Because, I mean, really, you're a le- leather smith, if that's even a word. Um, what, what, is mm-hmm. the te- what is the technical term for a leather maker? Leather, yeah, leather smith. You know, leather smith uh, but it's yeah. kind of a funny story how, yeah. you know, how we got started with belts. As uh, my neighbor at the time, you know, he came over uh, with his belt. It was a uh, it was a, an American made belt. I won't say the name, but the buckle had fallen apart on it. And he was asking me, like, "Hey, Danny, can you help me uh, fix my belt?" Like, not only can we fix it, we can make it better. And then that's when we started getting the idea, like, let's start making belts. And we started out with a side of leather and some small, few assortment of hand tools, and uh, started making really nice belts. And then we were like, "How can we?" You know, there were you know, there were multiple other companies out there making a U.S. tanned full grain leather belt, but we were we wondered what we could do to kind of set ourselves apart from the crowd, and that is when we reached out to a metalsmith here in Missoula. Uh, his name is Nathan Kemple, uh, just an incredible uh, metalsmith and just very artistic. Uh, he's just crazy talented. So met with him several times and spent a lot of time in his shop looking at some of his other work he had done. And that is when we developed our handmade buckle series. Uh, and those are all hand forged out of solid copper, bronze, and stainless steel. And he does some other, you know, carbon uh, steel uh, forged buckles are what we call the real Montana, uh, which is kind of a, has a fish scale pattern on it. And, you know, well, that's kind of where we started as our uh, base product, like who we are. And that has been, you know, a foundational piece of, of who Whiskey Leatherworks is are our, our belts that are hand-forged buckles. And that's kind of, you know, how we got started and then kind of branched out from there and, and putting the same amount of effort and quality into the different pieces that we're doing. Absolutely. Ali, do you have any follow-up to that? Um, not really. I, uh, I wish I did. I'm not the artist and I'm not the maker. My, my expertise is certainly in sales and marketing. Um, I guess the only follow-up I would have, which is, I guess, significant is in the work that I've done for the last, I've been in, in sales and marketing for over 20 years. And I, when Dan, as he said, um, we made that decision to go all in, it was so surprising to me, the reception um, of the community at large and also new marketplaces that we were delving into and in verticals, how quickly the marketplace responded. And uh, I, I give that as it, that, that's a testament really to the vision and the fact that the company grew organically and it was unique, you know, American made um, leather worker. So Dan, I kind of have to pass that back to you. I think that the reception, I've sold so many different things in my life. Mm. <laughs> and this is by far the easiest. <laughs> so uh, it's like kind of a dream come true for someone who's in sales and marketing to put forth um, just enough effort, but not too much and, and see a return on it. So that was really exciting. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more, um, you know, with the marketplace being very welcoming to your brand. Um I know from our end, from what we've seen in just the, the fly fishing community, because I don't know outside of that, and I can contest to that, you guys have been welcomed. And you, I mean, we're going to get into it later, but I mean, you've got, you've done some, a ton of great collabs with like some, some big brands. You've been well supported. You got fish print items, um, like uh, incorporated in your designs and stuff like that. So, and, you know, with that saying, like what, where I want to go with that is, is like how, how do you guys think that Daniel, how do you think that the industry is, you know, the fly fishing industry in particular is taken to whiskey other works. I mean, you started off making belts. Now you're like, well, well respected, well liked, uh, well responded and and your items are purchased within our community. Yeah. You know, kind of like the first kind of product that we had geared towards, uh, toward our, the fishing crowd was, um, one of our, it's called the bitter root wallets. Um, and it was kind of a funny story. I was one evening I was in the shop and, or my garage actually, and 
was uh, in the process of changing out a fly line and was about to throw the fly line away. And I was like, oh my goodness, wait, this would, uh, let me see what this, how this would work for a uh, lacing material on a wallet. And about an hour later, I had my first you know, fly line stitched wallet uh, made and went inside and showed it to Allie. And Allie's like, oh my gosh, it's so cool. And sort of showing around to friends and uh, just people around town and getting a lot of positive reception. So I was like, oh my goodness, maybe this is a thing. And, you know, from there, we kind of slowly expanded into different uh, products, incorporating a little, like a small element of fly fishing to it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like our fly line stitched flasks uh, would, be, would, have, would be another product that we have created that, you know, has that little bit of an element, you know, not too much in your face, like, hey, you know, I'm a huge fly fisherman, but just something that's kind of you know, a little subtle. But, um, yeah, that's kind of the kind of the person I am. I'm, I love the fish and I love to, you know, chat with other people that, you know, are fishermen or fisherwomen. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of the, the, the thought behind a lot of our products is not too fishy, but fishy enough to where it's, uh, you know, noticeable, you know, and appreciated by others who are fisher people. But now that you're part of the community and when I say the community, like the, the fly fishing industry, how do you feel that that, like, how does that make you guys feel that you're welcomed into that industry? Yeah, it's, 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 you know, it's been a really, the community itself has been extremely supportive, especially, you know, with the whole COVID mm -hmm. uh, pandemic that we've all gone through together, you know, I, I, you know, the, the fishing crowd has definitely been extremely supportive of us. And a lot of the stuff comes through Instagram, through DMs and just in words of encouragement and checking people, checking in and people trying to, help uh, promote and support each other and it kind of you know, there are several people out there that <clears throat> you know have really really stood up and really stood out as people who are like hey can, how can i help and um you know posting and reposting or story sharing uh, yeah it's you know the our community our fishing community is there's there's a ton of love and a ton of support and you feel it every time you open up like instagram or any, any social media outlet mm -hmm. you always feel that support and love that's awesome i know we're, we're since we're on social media let's talk social media ali i i take it you're the uh the person the marketing person behind the social media because if you are you're doing a fantastic job um you, you're uh, i can't even keep up with you guys um but yeah no tell us about that what are some of the challenges and what are, like how are some of the ways that you you guys are expressing yourself on social media yeah, that's a great question. It's a question we actually get asked a lot um, by companies here in Montana and companies elsewhere. So when I came on board in October of 2018, um, I oddly enough found myself in a position where the entire company had been based on social media. Our Lucy Leatherworks grew up on social media. Um, we don't have a brick and mortar store. So when I came into the, the company from the marketing and social media perspective, um, I did very little beyond just joining a conversation that was already occurring. And what the better way of saying it is, is this community at large, this fly fishing community, the outdoors community, has, has built our company as much as we build products, the building of the company has happened by the love and support of the fly fishing industry, the outdoors industry. Every time someone takes time throughout their day, and I know this because I do it all day long, to visit someone's post and make a co positive comment and share that every single moment that's happened, that has been what has grown our company and built our company. Um, and it's a really humbling answer because I wish like I could respond with like something great that I've done, but I literally just entered into the water of something that already existed and is so authentic and sincere and real. And the company grew organically as a result. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, totally agree. And you know what? You summed that up pretty nicely there. So Daniel, one of the things that I've caught and I've noticed is the amount of traction that you've got on this collab with uh, Sightline, with Edgar. Um, 
got a flask, you got a ton of stuff going on with this, with Edgar. And that's how I first came about noticing you guys is through that. And I'm sure other listeners as well, because Edgar has a, from Sightline um, Provisions has a, you know, large audience and, and whatnot. So you've done quite a few things with him. Can you walk us through like how, how, how that all transpired, where you, you guys got the idea and what, what your products are that you guys are making together? Yeah. I mean, just to start off, I mean, I, I could not have, you, I could not have picked a better person to collaborate with on anything at all. I mean, Agreed. Edgar is a solid, solid dude. I mean, he's, Agreed. yeah, it, yeah. It, it's been, you know, I, for the longest time, I am, I'm friends with um, Aaron with the fly vines. I'm not sure if you are familiar with the company. They yeah. use the recycled fly line. Uh, so Aaron knew Edgar in, for a while, she was like, oh my goodness, you, you know, you need to be working with Edgar. And that went on for <clears throat> probably close to a year or so. And then eventually he and I connected and uh, I sent him some uh, a few flasks and uh, he put some badges on them and sent them back to me. And I was like, oh my God, this is so, so cool. But again, it was, you know, it's just like our, the fishing community is, is responded really well to it and just kept encouraging us. And, you know, he and I had still continued to, uh, continue with that collaboration. And it's been, like I said, he's been a great guy to work with. And, uh, yeah, it, there's so much I could say about Edgar. And it, it's, uh, it, it's been a really, really pleasant experience working uh, with him. So you guys are made, you made the, the flask together. Is there any other projects that you've made together or anything that you guys got in the works together or something like that? Uh, not right now, you know, we're, uh, Edgar's really good about, you know, kind of balancing, um, kind of balancing things and kind of not getting too, uh, you know, heavily involved with one person or another. Uh, he, and he's, he has a really creative eye. He's definitely an artist. And, um, yeah, I, I, I think it's a good balance right now with, with the flask. Uh, you know, we've talked about a couple of other things too, but, um, yeah, it's been a, it's been a slow growth kind of a thing. And, it took us a while to kind of get uh, the flask up and going, but uh, yeah, I, I love the flask collaboration and um, yeah, I hope it continues. Well, there must be one. Can, I, can I jump yeah, in? Yeah, please oh, do. Yeah. Jump in, Can I jump in on this one? Um, uh, I just want to take that opportunity. You know, you mentioned, his, are you working on anything with Edgar right now? And I can't leave that question without um, just sharing something quickly that yeah. happened recently. And it goes, uh, I guess, to the deeper power of the community. Like, yes, we're, you know, we're selling things, we're selling things at the end of the day. Like, you know, we're making products and we're, and we're, and we're selling things. That's, that's what we do. We make and we make things for people personally. Um, when COVID uh, really came crashing down on everybody in, I guess it was, it was April, um, Edgar and Danny had been on the phone and, Edgar, you know, asked sincerely, how are things going? And this is where, you know, life gets serious in moments. And we didn't know what to expect. And we were scared. And Dan shared that. And Edgar said, well, hang on. I have some ideas. Like, I want you to try this model that I'm trying. I don't care. Just reach out. So you can reach out to saying, community members, do this. You're going to be okay. Like, do exactly these steps. This is his share the shop model that Edgar came up with. And he literally wrote out step-by-step instructions on how to follow this model and then had a 45-minute conversation with me on the phone. I was like, Edgar, can you just like dial it in for me a little more? He made exactly what I needed to know. I said, do you mind if I share this with my distilling industry? And he said, no, absolutely not. So something that's seemingly simple, like, Edgar's badges or our flask in the moment that 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 the the COVID hit and a lot of companies you know who struggled really hard Edgar threw us a lifeline in a way that a family member does you know Mm -hmm. we're not competitors Mm -hmm. we're family you're going to get through this and this is how you're going to get through this I just wanted to quickly say that because there's such depth to that particular relationship I just don't want to gloss over it. Um, and Danny, not that you're glossing over it, but I don't want it to just stay within the realm of product when we talk about Edgar because he kind of saved us there. And if it wasn't even just like, here's an idea, it was hearing someone say, I care, let's hash it out. 
Like you're not alone. We're, we're all businesses out here. Like, so I just, I wanted to add that piece. We, we so deeply appreciate that. So many true, so many people's true colors have come through recently and this community has quickly in, in more recent months has become more like evolved quickly into a family beyond just a community in moments like what is, what's going on presently. Absolutely. I, I remember yeah. that day yeah. specifically, you know, I was standing in the shop and Edgar happened to call me for some reason and I picked up and, and, uh, and I'm literally in the shop by myself because we're completely shut down. And it's like, uh, so what are you guys doing? And I was like, um, and I had no answer. I had no idea what to do. And that's when he and Allie, uh, got into, uh, conversations and that was within, by the end of the day, we had a, a, a pathway forward and it, it literally saved us like Allie was saying. That's just like, I'm on, on, on. As the host, I'm almost speechless. I'm tongue-tied, if you can't tell. Like, that's just fantastic. Those are the stories that we just, you know, the, that we love to hear. And those are the behind-the-scenes stories. Those are the, the authenticity of, of the industry, the authenticity of the people that work and run and collaborate and, and, and help each other within this industry. And, you know, like, it's that's fantastic to hear, guys. I know... Mm-hmm. Um, even Justin, Justin Pickett from, from Gig and Gas, he, he reached out to me. He's like, oh, you got to interview this company. I'm like, oh, I already got them on the books. They're slated to go. He's like, want me to help you interview them? I'm like, if you want, but it, so it should be all good. So it's kind of funny, right? Um, and you guys didn't even know that. So he 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 did that behind uh, behind the door as well, saying, you know, re- reach out to these guys. Make sure you interview them. And we had already had this set up. So, um, you know, that again, that's that's the, the coolness of this. So how, how, again, the family comes together, as, as you mentioned, Ellie. So, you know, yeah. speaking of families coming together and everything, I'm sure, like, what, like, what do you guys got going forward? Like, you must have some things going forward or something you can share or something you can't share. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dan, do you want to take that one or do you want me to take that one? So the, um, here, probably in the next week, we're going to be pressing go. I'm not really sure when this is going to air, but uh, hopefully by the time this airs, you know, everything will be up and running. But uh, you know, we've had such a positive response and uh, positive reception of all of our fish print products, uh, our belts and you know, some of our products that have the fish print on it, you know, the dog collars and leashes, um, that we are going to be pressing go on uh, some flip-flops uh, featuring the, uh, the wet, the, our fish print webbing stitched to uh, a full grain bison leather upper. Uh, so it's it's been in the works, and it's kind of a funny story how the how this project evolved. Uh, we were on a it's actually Father's Day last year. We were on a uh, overnight float trip on the Blackfoot River, and sitting around the campfire one evening, and one of our friends, uh, Aiden, he looked at me and was like, "Dude, why aren't you doing flip flops?" <laughs> and I looked at Allie. I looked at Allie and I was like, huh, that's a good question. <laughs> so I immediately, after the float trip, you know, was over, got back home, got everything unpacked and opened up my laptop and just started trying to find flip-flop companies that were that were willing to collaborate or do, uh, you know, private labeling or mm-hmm. trying to work with us on this. And you know, I had a list of criteria. I wanted it to be, you know, kind of domestically produced uh, product. That's kind of where we, that's one of our criteria for almost everything that we do is we try to source domestically rather than overseas. And then the other concern was, or the other priority was, you know, find, trying to find someone who has the same ethos and, and uh, more like just a, a really you know, solid product, but, you know, my uh, environmentally conscious people and, we ended up finding that of all places uh, in my home state of Georgia. So we found a flip-flop company <laughs> that wanted to provide us with the lower, uh, the soles of the mm-hmm. flip-flop mm-hmm. and they're sending us those. And then we are doing the actual manufacturing of the uppers and putting the whole flip-flop together here in our shop. So um, really excited about that. And it was, a uh, it, it took a long time and, it was kind of painful this past (laughs) I started wearing flip flops in like January of this year, (laughs) uh, literally like running through snow just to kind of keep them on all day as long as possible. Product testing. uh, 
<laughs> oh god, yep, it was brutal. Um, so you know, definitely uh, just trying to make sure. And we sent a, a bunch of flip flops out to a lot of people that we met through Instagram, and mm-hmm. I'm sure that the people know who they are if they if they're hearing this. Uh, you know, just like hey, we just sent out pairs of flip flops to a lot of friends through Instagram and business relations, and and uh, along with a questionnaire to fill out. Uh, actually, Justin Pickett was was one of the one of the one of the people that we reached out to. We were actually kind of focused on like warmer climates, and I know he's in Georgia, uh, so we sent him a pair. And like, all right, Justin, check these out, and you know, give us some feedback. And he, uh, you know, everybody that had a, that received a pair had something to add, you know, as far mm-hmm. as um, critiquing the product and suggestions. And you know, I, I think we have a really really nice product that is. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a, a really nice thing for us. So. Mm-hmm. You know, you guys are definitely known for for high quality. I mean, with you can see that in your weather. You, the the fact that you've you know sourced your your metal smith smiths in addition to your your work, Daniel, um, and mm-hmm. you, now you source this this flip flop. I mean, I'm going to go with this. Like, I think you're going to sell a ton of them. Right, so are you gonna get? More, are you gonna get more staff? Are you gonna get like an assembly team? Or your is the are the kids gonna be involved? Like how how are you gonna keep up with the demand of selling the flip flops in addition to everything else? Like, because how many products do you? How many products currently do you have on in your inventory? Like on your on your uh, in your in your lineup? Now, additionally, you have flip flops. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. You know that that's always the. The tough nut to crack is how do you scale and how do you mm-hmm. how do you scale and how do you maintain that personal relationship? Like every single order that leaves this shop, there's a handwritten note that goes with it that says thank you so much for you know, your order and your support. We hope you love this belt. If it's not perfect, let us know. Um, you know that's so for me that's that's a critical element in anything that we do. It you know we are. Everything is essentially is made to order, and mm-hmm. you know we don't have a ton of product sitting on the shelf that we just go grab and throw in a box and then you know put a label on it. Um, so yeah, that's that, that's the tricky thing is being able mm-hmm. to scale but maintain that direct to customer one on one relationship. That mm-hmm. I, mean, I feel like I feel like it's a relationship that begins whenever of someone of course it is you know supports us yeah. and um, mm-hmm. yeah. I think the answer is we don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, just, I don't think we actually know what we're doing or how to do it. <laughs> it's it's I mean, like, oh, sitting around a campfire with friends, and then bam, uh, uh oh, now what do we do? Yeah, I I don't know. It's yeah, it's it's going to be a learning curve for sure. I mean, when if you got a large PO and someone's like, okay, I need, you know, fifteen sizes seven, <laughs> twenty two size nine, forty six <laughs> size tens, I can keep going, right? Because I mean, there's a lot of numbers in between, right? Three size fourteen, oh, yeah. right? And, and Michael Jordan needs a special <laughs> pair, right? So, like, I mean, <laughs> I mean like, yeah. it's a lot. It's a lot of flip flops. That's just like say one shop, so or or one purchase order. <laughs> um so yeah i mean right in, in the big picture i'm so happy because that's 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 awesome for you guys i just you know i hope and i i know you'll i know you'll pull it off right and i know you'll pull mm-hmm. it off professionally but i think there's going to be a lot of late nights over at the earnest uh factory there so definitely. <laughs> oh yeah so, <laughs> the hq yeah, yeah. you betcha well, so. and it's, yeah it's, it's the putting your foot on the um just enough on the gas but getting ready to, you know, tap the brakes like a new driver. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I remember I, I grew up on a lake, and I the, the boat that I grew up on was a 13-foot Boston whaler. And I remember uh, coming into the dock once, and I, the boat was brand new, and I came in too fast. I was maybe 15 or 16, and I cracked the just the, the rim lining around the edge of the hull, the upper part, you know, yeah. 13 foot Boston Miller has a, almost like a phalange around the edge. And I just cracked a tiny bit there. And my dad went and got some epoxy and I was helping him fix it. And he just kind of quietly said, as we were fixing it, he said, you know, Allie, if you never come in too fast, you're never going to have that accident again. So I think with Whiskey Leatherworks, we've kind of been doing that where we're not pushing marketing necessarily um, massively, although we, we have some, a little bit of marketing going on, certainly through social media, but I think trying to do this organically, mm-hmm. sending out those 
prototypes, getting feedback. Um, we're hopefully maintaining that, like, okay, now we know what we're doing. Now we're ready to take that next step in the ramp up. But I would say it's definitely, it's kind of an imposing reality, um, trying to make sure that we're doing it properly and that we're not going too quickly. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, uh, definitely key, right? Definitely key for, for everybody. But, uh, you know, the, the, I think I also know the demand is there as well for the product. So like I said, you guys have your challenges. And one thing about a Boston whaler is they always say they're unsinkable or unflippable. So <laughs> if we're going to, if we're going to compare <laughs> metaphors, so there we are. They cut it up into three parts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they all there you are. Hey, you know, I, I wanted to, I wanted to just touch base for those that don't know. And, and, um, you know, we talked about the belts, we talked about flip flops, we talked about flasks. What other products are in your lineup that we that we haven't mentioned that we should know about? Hmm, good question. Um, yeah, those are those are really our our the core products of our of our company. Um, so we we've been branching out with the, the pet world, kind of dog leashes and collars. Okay. Good. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so so we actually we had this we had a company approach us a year ago and ask us to start dabbling in it to see if this might be something that they would like to carry. Um, so I don't want to give away too much, but you know, stay tuned. Um, and uh, in the next couple of months, keep an eye out for your uh, a beloved retailer in the fly fishing industry, in the fly fishing world. Um, and there's a possibility that you might just start seeing some of our dog leashes and collars pop up in there. It's something we're excited about. And, um, um, I guess we'll just have to wait and see, but that, mm-hmm. that, that too should be coming down the pike here. Awesome. It kind of goes back to the, uh, pressing the gas just yeah. enough and not too much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's going to be another, uh, a fun problem to solve is covering these, uh, purchase orders that are, that are coming in. So, so Daniel, with all these purchase orders and all these irons in the fire, um, you know, looking at how how busy you're going to be, are you do you uh, like seek out an apprentice? Are you looking for an apprentice or, or bringing on t- someone to to help you meet the demand? Yeah, so right now I have one person in the shop with me, uh, Tori Virtual. She is a jewelry smith uh, by training. That's what she went to school for, and she has her own uh, jewelry design company, and she makes a lot of really cool. Uh, westerny kind of bolo ties that kind of tie in some of our uh, our, our leather as well. So uh, definitely check out some of her stuff. Uh, but she works here full time in the shop and does a great job. She took very little uh, training to get up to speed, and she's uh, she does just as good a you know she does just as good a job as as I do. And I I, I feel like I get to just let her run with certain projects, and she does a great job. Uh, then we have another person that's joining us uh, later this week um, okay. to kind of help Allie out with the uh, sales and marketing and also uh, with some of the production side of things as well. So we're, mm-hmm. we are growing uh, slowly but surely. And I, I kind of like that uh, kind of the speed of growth, you know, it helps me to kind of maintain uh, quality control of everything that's going on in, in the shop. Mm-hmm. That's one thing we absolutely do not want to compromise is, our, is the quality of our product. Awesome. Allie, what's uh, what's Tori's business name? Sorry. Um, so Tori's business, so she, her site right now is on Instagram and it is, um, it's, there's a lot of spaces in between, but there's a, um, at, at and then there's like underscore T underscore O underscore R underscore I, it's Tori and then Virtual which is her last name, D-I-R-C-H-I-L-L. So if you look up Tori Virtual, um, and we had, we actually just tagged her in a post about two days ago, and it's a post of she and Danny Leatherworking. So she is um, right there, maybe three posts back, Leatherworking with Danny. Uh, she's just a neat girl. She can handle anything, and we're so lucky to have her. Yeah, yeah sounds, definitely. Like it. sounds like it for sure. All right, guys, you know what? I want to look at this. Five years, you got you got the world in, your, in the palm of your hand right now. Things are good, but five years from now, where do you see yourselves? Oof. Please don't say, please don't say <laughs> on a beach. Say, like, please don't say. Where, where, where do you see whiskey weatherworks five years from now? What would you like to see? You know, 
Blue sky it. Um, I, I think there's like two ways that we could answer that. So I the think I'll, I'll good. throw both out as options. Um, our daughters have both shown immense interest in, in taking on the company early on when Danny and I started, we went in, uh, completely in October of 2018. <clears throat> we explained to our daughters, uh, that we would be tightening our belts as a family for a few years with the end goal that we're going to be building a company that ultimately if they had the interest and the fortitude that they could take over ownership if they wanted to, when they got older. Mm -hmm. So, um, our two daughters right now are 15 and 13 and both have maintained interest in having that as a part of their future, which is interesting. So, um, I think maybe recently I said, you know, Dan, if we sell the company, and our daughter, our 15-year-old, said, no, 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 no. You are not selling the company. That's my company. So, <laughs> um, so in five years, it, you know, I don't quite know where it would be. I guess I guess the, the hope would be is that it continues to bless folks around it and that the company continues to grow. And if our, if our girls want to take this over as a family company, I don't think I could be any prouder, but I also don't want to put any pressure on them to do so. But I'm sure in five years, Danny and I will still be in the shop um, working around the clock. And uh, I don't know. Dan, did you ever different I, thought? Yeah, I think we're going to be knee deep in uh, Whiskey Leatherworks paying for a college tuition and, uh, <laughs> in the sort. So probably right here, but hopefully a little, maybe a larger shop and see more people uh, around helping. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. I just love the positivity. I love the authenticity and, uh, you know, how, how you guys are a family and you're coming together on that. So before I let you go, final words, who's it going to be? Go ahead, Alice. Oh, me? Seriously, Dave? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. I'll give it a shot. I might hot potato it, but okay. We owe who we are to the beauty of this greater outdoors community. Thanks for showing up for us and we want to continue to show up for you. So thank you. Wow. I would agree. Like uh, just, you know, for final words for myself is, is, is thank you for everything, you know, like Ali was saying earlier today, earlier on, uh, you know, we have a product and it wouldn't be anything if it weren't for the people who are supporting us. Um, and it's from, you know, the people, every person who places an order, you know, we're okay. deeply, deeply grateful for their business and their support. And, you know, it's, a, it's something I'm, I'm just completely touched by every time I look down and see that there's an order and people are supporting us and or hop on that social media and see that someone has sent us a DM that's really heartfelt and, you know, like thanking us for their wallet or belt or whatever it is and you know i you know i'm more appreciative than they are so i i would say thank you so much awesome you know you guys are just so humble so in continuing to support you where can we find you guys at what's uh email instagram if someone wanted to reach out have a leather question wanted to look at your products where could they find you guys at yeah, so uh, Instagram, it's whiskey underscore leatherworks. And then our website is uh, whiskeyleatherworks.com. And, you know, keep uh, you know keep an eye on it. We're, they're, we're adding new stuff, you know, periodically. And, uh, yeah. And if you did have questions, um, those would go to Dan at Whiskey Leatherworks or Allie at Whiskey Leatherworks. It's just the two of us there. So please reach out. Perfect. I'm going to make sure I put all those details within the show notes so that everyone can reach you guys. Guys, I want to thank you both. I love the the authenticity. I love how humble you are, the, you know, how much you've done for everybody and uh, everything like that. So I want to thank you, listeners. I want to thank you guys as well. So thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, thanks, Greg. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to, to learn about our company and to share our story, Greg. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Anytime. All right. You've been listening to the Fly Fishing Insider Podcast. If you like this podcast episode, please let us know. Leave a review and subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast listening platform.